special gnocchi today with Chef John from Mulberries. Or Chef Joe. Chef, <laughs> Chef Joe is here. How you doing? <laughs> Good. Nice to see you. Nice we haven't see seen you. you in a bit. Yeah. We're making a great meal that would be perfect for this fall temperatures, fall, you know, in a normal fall. Right. Um, three cheese gnocchi. Three cheese. We're using uh, ricotta infestata, which is a dried ricotta. It's, uh, it doesn't have the moisture that a regular one would have. You can use regular ricotta, but you want to drain it. You know, put it in some cheesecloth or in a colander and let it sit overnight. Oh, really? So this is this is much easier. It saves you that step. Uh, you don't uh, normally find us in a grocery store. Uh, Gershow's carries it on Grand Street. I know that. Um, so if anybody wants to try this with the impostata, that's where I would go. So if you only have the regular, you have to actually leave it sit in the refrigerator in a strainer? Right, I would, yeah. Because you, want, you don't want all the moisture that comes along with it because then you get a mushy product. It's sometimes skim... Um, more watery than the regular whole milk? You know, it, it's, I, I think it just depends on who makes it. Does it matter with this re recipe if you use the skim milk uh, ricotta? I've never tried it with that, but I wouldn't think so. Okay. Think so. All right, so we have that. We got Parmesan cheese and Romano cheese. And this is double zero flour, which is uh, a very finely milled flour. Mm -hmm. uh, that's probably in specialty stores as well. You can use all purpose flour, that's not a problem. You just use less or more or what? Same amount. Oh. And you can use, if you want to make a different type of gnocchi with a different type of flour, you can do that as well. There's spinach and gnocchi, uh, sweet potato and gnocchi, potato and gnocchi. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. And then and you have some eggs. eggs. Eggs to help bind everything together. You use the white and the yellow? Uh, two, two, um, two whole eggs, large, and uh, one yolk. Easy recipe? Very easy. Very okay, easy. I was just telling you before, I tried to make gnocchi um, on Friday, I did. And... I don't know what I did wrong, but it didn't turn out as well. It was okay. They thought it was dumplings. So what do you think? Is this one as easy as you're portraying it to be? Yeah, no, I, I really do. I, I think, uh, you know, rolling it, is, it takes a little bit of practice, but I think the end result, I mean, it's, it's not very difficult, and uh, the end result is it tastes great. It's very light, and again, our second uh, helpings recipe, we're making chicken soup and putting the gnocchi in there intact as a dumpling, so it's perfect. Excellent. All right, when we come back, we'll start the process. Sounds good. Thanks so much, Joe. Back to you, Allie. Thank you very much, Victoria and Joe. We're going to go now. It's time to start making up that gnocchi in the kitchen. And Victoria and Joe are just about ready to go. That's right. Chef Joe is making a three-cheese gnocchi. Right. And we're starting out with what kind of cheese is this, this again? This is impostata. Once again, it's a, it's a dried ricotta. It uh, doesn't have nearly the moisture that a regular ricotta you have in the store would have. And you can't probably get that at the supermarket. You said Gershio's on Gershio's Grand on Grand Street, yeah. Okay, so how much is That's this? It's about two pounds. Two pounds. And how much will this make? Uh, two pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. That was just a trick question. Okay. You've asked. Then we have two, uh, two large eggs and then one large egg yolk. Okay. And that helps bind everything together. We can plop that in there. And then you mix that, to the dr what stuff yeah, together? Yeah, we mix that together just to get uh, mildly incorporated here. It's a messy job, I'll tell you that. Somebody's got to do it. Now, All does right. somebody just make batches of this? You sell this at Mulberry's? Yes, we do. Who we makes make the gnocchi? You know, we pretty much do it by committee. Um, we try to teach the younger guys to do it as kind of like a hazing type of thing because it is a process. <laughs> the gnocchi making. Exactly, right. <laughs> okay. And then we have some uh, Parmesan cheese. All of it? Yep. What is this, like a three that's about a, cup? Yeah, that's three quarters, and that's about a cup and a half. And you like the uh, Romano, you said? Yeah, I prefer Romano cheese. I think it has a, a, a better flavor. Because uh, it's sheep's milk, you said? It's sheep's milk, Is it right. always sheep's milk? Uh, Romano? Yeah, I mean, they, they probably make it with some cow, but uh, Pecorino Romano is typically made with sheep. I didn't know that. Gives it a different flavor. And then this is the zero flour you said. Double zero. It's uh, very finely milled. It's much finer than all-purpose, but all-purpose flour works. Okay, and that's it. And how much is this? Just like three quarters of a cup? Uh, that's about yeah. two cups. This is two cups. I'm sorry, that's about a cup and a half. Okay. Well, I'm used to making big 30, right. 40 pound batches, so. <laughs> and we just. Which would uh, make 30 pounds of gnocchi. Exactly. All right. <laughs> I'm quick study. So we just mix that up real good. Thank you very much. Typically, we do this in bus tubs. And do you do it, um, you have a mixer or something that... No, we do it all by hand. You do? We do it all by hand. Oh, my goodness. Every bit of it. But you could certainly use a mixer if you have a big enough mixer. And we end up with this very okay. ugly dough. Very sticky. Right. That's how it should look, though. That's how you want feel. it. Right. You want it to be sticky and you want it to be firm. Okay, so and I've I got... I think we've accomplished that. Looks like it. Uh, I've got... 20 seconds left. Okay. And it's then what we do is we probably just, uh, if, if you th if think it needs a little flour, we put a little flour in it. But this is how it should come out, this, this consistency? Our, this is our end result right here. It almost looks like a bread dough, like it's about to rise. Yeah, you know what, it, it does seem that way. Okay. You know, but it's very when, light. When we come back, you're going to teach us how to correctly roll it out, and we're going to start cooking it up. You got it. All right, back to you, Allie.
in the Kitchen World kitchen where they're making up some amazing gnocchi. That's right. Joe now has completed the dough. You refrigerated it right. for a bit. Uh, now you're going to teach us how to roll it out and cut it up. Because right, that was a hard to part for me when I tried it. Cutting it, it kept sticking to the to the knife. Yeah, that happens. Um, I think if you, sometimes you put a little flour on your vessel or maybe even some nonstick spray, that'll help uh, okay. and prevent that. Sh you should always refrigerate it before you try and cut it? I always do because it, it's going to be a little bit firmer. Okay, so you don't, you don't want it to be uh, mushy. Okay. All right, so let's cut this into something smaller here. A little flour. You don't want too much flour because then it won't roll. And all you do is you roll from the middle out. Okay. All right. So, what is that? Is that like a... Just a pastry cutter. Pastry cutter. Yep. All right. We like to go to about a half an inch in diameter. Okay. Yeah, it looks something like this. All we right. A whole bunch of these. And then we're just going to cut them little by little. I know. I just remembered. You didn't add any salt. To you, your gnocchi. You can, uh, you know, in the restaurant, we don't put any salt in it. Because the cheese has some salt in it, but, you know, our philosophy is to let people salt it the way they like to have it. Taste. I love that. I'd rather. You less know, salty than too salty. Exactly. We can fix less salty. Right. Too salty is very tough to fix. Okay, and then <clears throat> what we used to do at my grandmother's, you take the tine of a fork and you just roll it. And what that does is create some ridges, and that will help <sighs> hold the sauce. <laughs> All right? So. We don't do that all the time because sometimes we're in a rush, but it's the right way to do it. So, Jeez. just like that. You can use your thumb. I could probably do that. Yeah. <laughs> so easy Victoria yeah, can do it. Exactly. We should have all that right. little mantra put underneath. So easy Victoria does it. So then we plop these in the water, and these usually take around... No oil in the water or anything? No oil. No, no salt in there either. And you know when it's done because they sunk right when you dumped them in? And they will pop right up. You'll watch them come up one by one. Can you overcook? Uh, Noki? You certainly can. Um, what happens it, to it? Does it become tough? It will become very large. Uh, just like if you overcook pasta. If you overcook pasta, it absorbs so much water and right? it becomes very large. Oh, At that point, you really, you really can't eat it. It becomes more uh, of a dumpling than anything else. Maybe and if you wanted to, you could sneak in some soup. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So you're going to put it in then after you have some here. Right. So we, we would drain this, actually. Okay. We'll just very simply drain that. Without Once they're done. Stuff. And then we put them in an ice bath. Okay, and what that does is that firms them up. You could eat them after you take them out of the water. Um, light as a cloud. Very light, very fluffy. And then what we're going to do is cook them again. Okay? All right. And we use extra virgin olive oil. And what this does is gives us a little bit of a crust, a little texture. No garlic, no nothing, just an no, olive just oil. Just like that, yep. I love the simplicity of this. So Italian cooking is meant to be very simple, and sometimes people tend to overcomplicate it, but yeah, simple that makes is better. It, that messes me up. That makes it Victoria can't do this. <laughs> All right. So we're going to cook these for a few minutes. And then you are going to put put it with some red sauce? I use uh, my favorite tomato sauce, which happens to be my own. Uh, but you can use any tomato sauce. Uh, you can make Alfredo sauce. You can do butter and sage. I mean, you can do just about anything with these. They're very, very versatile. At Mulberries, how do you serve it? Oh, with tomato sauce. Can people come in and request different toppings? They do. Toppings? do they, they do, and we do our best to accommodate everybody. All right. We can't always, but we, we do our best. <laughs> How long do you um, saute them? Since they're already cooked, you just do it till they're... You, you want to warm back? them through, and um, just you, you want a little brown crust to form on them. It just gives a little bit of texture. Um, it's just a little bit different. Okay. So we would... While we're it. waiting for this to cook, tell us about Mulberry's hours. You... Uh, you are consistently busy from the time you open to the time you close. Knock on wood. Knock uh, on wood. That is a good thing. We're open for lunch at 11.30 every day, and we just continue right through. We have a, a late lunch menu that starts at about 2 o'clock, and that goes till 4. And then our dinner menu, dinner menu is from 4 until 9.30, and that's uh, Monday through Saturday. And Sunday is dinner only 3 to 8. You have people literally lining up for dinner starting at what time? Uh, well, 4 o'clock. On Sundays, it's a little earlier. Um, Sundays, sometimes they come at 2 or 2.30. Right, to just um, get the evening meal done. Exactly. Um, reservations? 
Uh, I highly suggest it, yeah. Okay. And we typically don't, we, we, it's a small restaurant, so it's very difficult to accommodate large parties. And we've had some people complain about that lately. And just to let people know, uh, we'd love to take tables of 10 and 12 and 14, but it's just, it's very difficult to manage that with our, our okay. kitchen and our size of our restaurant. It's worth the wait. Thank you. Small berries. All right, so um, you can see there's a little bit of crust on there. Yep. The music is playing. When we come back, we're going to show the finished product, and we're going to talk about second helping. Sounds good. All right, thank you, Joe. All right. When we come back first, though, Amelia Siegel, our meteorologist, is... Before we move into uh, second helpings, this is what, this beautiful look. This is, this is your signature monster meatball. Our world-famous mulberry meatball. Look at that. Put on top of the delicious three-cheese gnocchi. Yeah, a little and bit then a little of cheese. Parmesan Reggiano. Oh, that is delicious. Okay, there all right, is. and then for our second helpings, as if you're going to have any gnocchi left, you have some chicken noodle soup? Right, and you can use uh, your, your obviously your own soup, uh, any kind of canned soup, and you have a choice. You can either use some of the gnocchi that you've cooled down or just use some of the dough and just plop them in. Just uncooked. uncooked. Let them boil them in there. And as soon as they come to the surface, you've got chicken and dumplings. That's it. Very Listen, easy. we have a minute and a half left. Let's talk about freezing because... If I were to freeze, I wouldn't know whether to do it raw with the raw dough or cook it first. Which would you recommend? Uh, you know, I'd suggest cooking them first. I You've think, tried it both ways. Yeah, I have. I think cooking them first is better because uh, when, you, when you freeze the raw dough, it absorbs a lot of moisture between the freezing and the thawing. And I think if they're cooked already, it tends to absorb uh, less moisture. And then you just simply boil them and uh, put them in your sauce. Now, here's where I run into a problem because I never have any freezer space. What if you don't separate them and freeze them, you know, like on a cookie dough separately? Is that uh, going to make a difference in when you thaw them? Uh, well, you know, well, you should put them on some wax paper with some flour on a cookie sheet and freeze them and then take Flatten them. them out so they're separated? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then take them out of there after they're frozen and then put them in. You can put them in a baggie and just put them in the freezer. Okay, everything's been delicious today, Thank as you. usual. Remind people uh, again where Mulberry's is? Mulberry's at 64 Jackson in Bethlehem Park in Lackawanna. It's right off Route 5. Excellent. Joe, thank you so thank much. You very everything's much. delicious nice to be back. again. Thank you. Back to you, Allie.